Last week, I opened the show by reading a note that a viewer had sent to me to highlight the importance of this all too long forgotten art, the thank you card. It's vital to teach our children the basic forms of etiquette so they can grow into being people that other people wanna be around, work with, and be in relationship with. You know how parents are so concerned about socialization these days. You've probably heard me argue that that isn't the professed focus of our education system, and it shouldn't be. But I also argue that socialization doesn't happen properly in schools either. And in any case, that kind of socialization is the wrong focus. It's a distraction. Because parents ought to be more concerned about life skills, something the system severely limits. Perhaps we forget that parents are the primary educators of their children because the schools convince us not to concern ourselves. They've got it covered, but let's not fool ourselves anymore. Our children have so much to learn from us, right? Remember home ec and shop classes? I took architectural drawing in my high school and really enjoyed that hour of just focusing on aspects of design and methods of expression on the page. There was a right way to draw arrowheads. And I remember learning how in order to draw a straighter line freehand, you focus your attention on the end point. To this day, I love to read blueprints and that love was fostered by my architectural drawing class in 11th grade. And then there was shop class where we learned how to use some of the tools for woodworking. I vividly recall the handle I made with our lathe and sewing class and cooking where each student had to create some dish from scratch using a recipe just to demonstrate a minimal level of proficiency in the kitchen. These rudimentary life skills, I would argue, encourage in the student a level of competency, a feeling of competency that becomes an integral part of how they see themselves in the world. And sadly, home ec classes like those are more often than not long gone. Formerly a vital part of the high school curriculum, they've been downsized and eliminated to allow for what exactly? What did the education geniuses replace them with? It seems they somehow broadened the academics while limiting their scope because schools don't teach like they used to and students certainly don't learn as much these days. Now students with high school diplomas are regularly given remedial English classes in college just to bring them up to a standard of writing that before wouldn't have gotten them out of eighth grade. And as our culture has gradually moved from entirely self-sufficient doers to a society of consumers who often cannot do even minor things for themselves, we've voluntarily adopted an attitude of helplessness that is quite seductive, but also false, while replacing menial tasks with games and entertainment. It used to be parents were concerned with developing offspring who would create and contribute. Now this seems to have shifted. Parents are preoccupied with their ability to provide and protect, where it used to be that the child's behavior as a contributing citizen was the greatest measure of the parent's success. Now it's more about luxury for the children and their overall lack of discomforts, even in their failures. Keeping the child from experiencing pain at almost any cost, including her own self-esteem. It may seem nicer, but it can also be instead debilitating and destructive. So ask yourself now, what is your plan for your children? What is your goal for them? 
and how do you achieve it? Today, I want to present for you the tremendous benefits of having young people do the humble undertakings we've grown to think are below even the average person. There's no shame in hard work, and there's really a great deal of pride to be had in menial labor and a job well done. Perhaps most importantly, however, there's no teacher quite as effective as personal responsibility. A long-term Harvard study conducted over the course of 75 years determined the necessary ingredients to happiness. Guess what? The most important component for joy, finding meaning and happiness, is loving relationships. Forget successful careers and good physical health as markers unless they are accompanied by loving relationships. Neither money nor power are significant contributors to a fulfilling life. In fact, they correlate poorly with happiness. Relationship with others and work is crucial. They say the key is concern for others and productive work to replace narcissism, which necessarily brings unhappiness. Have you thought about your plan for your kids? Is it a a good job or a happy life? You know, it's funny because we have plans for ourselves, for our vacations, for our jobs, but I think a great number of people don't plan for their children's futures beyond saving for college, and that's a tremendous oversight. Now I know, we get all caught up with the education establishment's plan mainly because the schools put so much pressure on everyone regarding education. But isn't happiness more important than that? People who send their kids to school and hope everything else just sort of works out are missing the boat because the schools are really not doing the job of parenting anyway. And just knowing a bunch of stuff isn't helpful without a life plan. Part of that plan should be general life skills, and that's where chores come into play. Are you familiar with the marshmallow test? This was a long-term study which came out about 50 years ago. Researchers put preschool children in a room, in a chair, in front of a table, and put a marshmallow on a plate in front of him or her. They told the child if he would wait long enough without eating the marshmallow, he would get not just the one in front of him, but two marshmallows 